time has come to rip out all that water saturated balsa under the windlass, put the fore deck back together stronger than ever before, which we did in the last video. And now we get to reinstall the windlass with all the little details involved. But best of all, we get to put on our brand new 3 8 inch Maggie chain, which was made in Italy. Hello, we are Patrick and Rebecca Childress on the 40-foot Valiant sailboat Brick House. Now, don't you laugh at that name. We are putting this boat back together far better and stronger than when it came out of the factory in 1976. I want to show you a little bit of the neighborhood that we have to deal with and the things out here that cause us a few headaches. I admire anybody who can restore a boat inside of a shed or a garage. But the rest of us cruisers have to deal with all the other boats that are around us, all of their sanding dust, plus they, they get to deal with all of our sanding dust. Yeah, so we are pretty well compact in here, but we aren't going anywhere for a few months. But this is the biggest problem right up here. In a stormy southwest wind, these Casalierna trees commonly known as Australian pines, spread their needles everywhere and make a terrible in the decks of our sailboats. Just last night, before the storm hit, I had scrubbed our sailboat decks with detergent and a scrub brush and a lot of water to get them clean, and now <laughs> all of that was for naught. Soon our decks will be looking just like our neighbor's decks. South Africa is a big coal producing, exporting country, and they put coal onto ships just a few miles to our southwest. So with these stormy southwest winds, we get a dusting of coal dust. And this was just white glove clean last night. And so this is only the first layer. So during these videos, you're gonna see this boat in a real dark mess. I don't wash it every day, that's useless. So when you see the decks kind of looking grody, it's all from the coal dust. So with that west wind, it isn't just the pine needles and all that terrible coal dust, but all these little pine cones. And I'll tell you, walking around these decks barefoot, they could really get you hopping if you're not careful. So we'll get this deck cleaned up a little bit and let's get started on putting the windlass back together. So we need to drill holes for the four bolts the chain pipe and also the electricals. But let's back up a little bit. Before I ever made these repairs, I plugged up the existing holes with butyl. I could have used modeling clay or just about anything else because I don't want resin and fiberglass to fill up these holes. I want the exact placement to stay the same when I reinstall the windlass. And I'll be able to drill up through the bolt holes and use those for placing the windlass back on top of the newly repaired deck, and then I'll just use pencil marks to mark the location of the holes for the chain pipe and also the electrical. So the bolt holes I drilled up from inside out, and for these larger holes using the hole saw, I don't wanna have to go inside and have all that dust and everything falling down in my face. So I'm cheating a little bit and drilling everything from the top side down. You should really drill from the top side down and then once the pilot bit breaks through, drill from the opposite direction. It makes much less um, friction on the hole saw and makes the whole operation much faster and easier actually. So it took just a little sanding with the drum sander on the drill to straighten out the chain pipe and also to ease over the edges where the wires can be coming up through the wire pipe. While the aluminum backing plates are out, this is a great time to grind them down to bare metal and prime and paint them, get them ready to reinstall. So we have three backing plates, two aluminum and one polyethylene to install.
The three quarter inch polyethylene board adds very little strength to the backing plates, but it is a very good surface for mounting wire ties and also the splash curtain. And it's time to go in on my back through the tiny access door in the V-berth, lay on my back on a pile of chain where you do become very nose to nose with the work to be done. Since the underside of the deck was never flat and level, I always had to use wooden shims to fill up any voids in those areas. Well, this time I decided to wrap that first backing plate in plastic as a release agent and then mix up a lot of thickened epoxy, thickened with cabosil, a very fine silica, and then smeared that underneath that deck or onto the decking and then squished that first plate up into place and then it was held in place with self-tapping screws up into the fiberglass deck. It's very nice to see the glue squeezing out around the edges. So now I know I have a nice even full contact throughout the full area of this first backing plate. So now the second layer of backing plate goes on and that's held in place with even longer self-tapping screws that go into the fiberglass so that it doesn't come crashing down in my face while I'm putting it all together. And there's still more prep work to do before we can put everything together. The Low Franz Tigris windlass requires the gear oil to be changed every four years. The only way in the world to do that is to take the whole windlass out of the boat and turn it upside down and let it drain for a while. So this is the perfect time to do it. This two and a quarter inch high mounting block will bring the gypsy high enough so it'll be equal with the height of the bow roller. So the chain links will have full contact inside of the gypsy. No caulk or sealant that I know of sticks very well to polyethylene, but butyl in a caulking gun tube does a pretty darn good job of sealing that mounting block to the deck, especially when bolted down. And I'll also be using butyl to seal the bottom of the windlass to the mounting block. We have oversized electrical wires on this windlass and they're very stiff and very hard to pull up through the tight turns and the holes coming up underneath the motor. So working by myself, I really caulk up the ends of the bolts, shove them down into the mounting holes and then tighten up with vice grips to hold the bolt in place while I go down below and put the nuts on and secure them. So once all the bolts are all tightened up, I can make the electrical connections. Those wires have to come underneath the motor and then up. If they come along the side at all, there won't be enough room for the cover to fit back on. But this is when I clean up all the contact points for the gasket to fit on the housing and on the windlass itself. And since I don't have a new gasket from Lou Franz, I can make my own out of a little piece of thin rubber. Regular contact cement will hold everything in place. A diesel mechanic once told me, don't ever use silicone on a rubber gasket. I don't remember his reason why, but I have always used silicone on this gasket and I have never had any leaks and I want to make sure I never do. I can't afford salt water getting into this motor. Since we are switching from 5 16 inch chain to 3 8 inch chain, which is more in line for this 14 ton boat, we had to get a new gypsy to match the new chain. We did not want chain made in China. As Practical Sailor magazine says, there's some very good Chinese made chain and other Chinese made chain that is not suitable at all. And the problem is none of it is marked, so you don't know what you're getting. 
Rebecca did a ton of research and we finally decided to go with Maggie Chain made in Italy and we ordered it through Maggie Chain USA. Maggie Chain USA was extremely helpful getting this chain to us in Africa at a reasonable cost. The thing about Maggie Chain is it's stamped every three feet or so, every meter or so with MCIT, which means Maggie Chain Italy. So we know where it was made. We know what we are getting. And we also got a test certificate to show that this chain meets all of its specified strength and other characteristics. If the seller of a chain can't give a cert for that chain, and if the chain is not marked with the manufacturer's stamp, then there's just too many uncertainties for me to be dealing with a product like that. Before loading 300 feet of chain into our chain lockers, I first painted the first 20 feet of chain with red paint. This would be a warning indicator, so if we're running out a lot of chain, I'll be aware that I don't have much left. We mark the chain every 50 feet with colored wire ties. We have two anchor chain lockers. 150 feet goes underneath the V berth and another 150 feet goes in the main chain locker just below the windlass. First we tie a green safety line to an iPad inside of the V berth locker. It comes up through a pipe into the upper chain locker and out through the deck pipe of the windlass. And here the green line gets tied to the red part of the anchor chain. In case of an emergency and we have to detach ourselves from that anchor chain, we can easily cut this line and be on our way. With Rebecca down in the V-berth feeding the chain into that area, we get everything loaded on board. Right now inside of the upper anchor locker, we just have some rubber front door welcome mats to help protect the fiberglass from the galvanized chain. But this is what we will be replacing those welcome mats with, a nice draining mat that allows water to flow underneath it, airflow all around it, and that'll help to keep the anchor locker dry and help protect the fiberglass in that area. Now I've made this curtain out of sailcloth, just some old sailcloth. I mean, uh, plastic shower curtains, some old plastic would do just as well as long as it's heavy. But I'm going to hang this up on the inside here and drape down. So that'll help to keep the splashing water from the chain in here from slamming up against this door and trying to escape. I've had to rework this door and give a bevel, just like you would on a windowsill of a house. So it watersheds back in and all of this has been glued with uh, thickened epoxy just to seal the ingrain of the wood. Over the decades, this marine plywood bulkhead had deteriorated and inside one of the laminates of ply was just peeling off. It was just falling apart. It was never finished, never painted or anything because it's such a high humidity. What could possibly happen? It had to fall apart. So I went inside, I took out this chain plate, took out the windlass, got everything out of here so I could work and then peeled back that one ply of plywood completely out of here. I was able to get it out and away from underneath the tabbing. So that really wasn't too disturbed. I got everything out of here and then put in a sheet of fiberglass. It's very thin fiberglass. It's finished on the outside with white gel coat and just raw fiberglass on the inside. So I glued that, this up with thickened epoxy. I used some screws to help hold it in place until it was all set. And I didn't care what it looked like. It, cosmetics inside here, it didn't matter. So I wasn't that neat with the epoxy, the seams. I wanted epoxy to come slipping out of any of the seams and the joins. I crammed thickened epoxy down here behind the tabbing. So I was able to reuse that and glue everything back in place. And um, so now it's going to last. The chain plate is back in here. Oh, this is one important thing too, is this little handle for getting in and out of this place upside down. I can hang on to it and then swing myself in on my back. Without this little handle, it's extremely difficult to get into this tight confines. So now with that curtain made out of the old sailcloth, I'll be screwing it up to um, polyethylene. I'll screw it up 
on the ceiling over here and that'll help to keep water off of all these connections for the up down switches for the windlass and all the other wires over on this side and of course water from getting through to the inside of the v-berth everything is retapped actually didn't even have tabbing up here on the ceiling when the boat was built there was no tabbing between the ceiling and this bulkhead but there is now but everything is very tabbed in along the whole ceiling in this wall joint and th that was several years ago there's no cracks everything is looking good so this repair was in good shape and it's going to last a long time i did the same thing on the outside ripped off a full layer of plywood here all the way back to the left and to the right all the way down to the bottom took all these trim strips out and that made everything a lot easier to get to and uh, it's all fiberglass now at least one layer it never made much sense to me to have a chain plate bolted to a bare plywood bulkhead chain plates are notorious for leaking and damaging wood so I feel far better now having this bulkhead treated and insulated from any potential water intrusion from the chain plate. All sealed in with thickened epoxy on the sides, on the ceiling, uh, and also on the uh, starboard side here. So this is getting almost to the finish point. I'll hang that curtain now inside here and uh, then get ready to rework the door. I'm going to have a new, uh, new door here and put Formica on both sides, plastic laminate. Formica is a brand name, plastic laminate is the generic name. Oops, there's one more thing to do before getting out of the chain locker completely, and that is to take some wire ties and put them on as drip stops. There's not enough room or wire to have drip loops. So we'll put these wire ties up here. Any water that comes off of that chain from slopping around in here, it won't run down the wire to places that I don't want it to go. So we also have some uh, wire ties way down here at the end so that water can't run back through this hole into the inside of the boat. There's one more thing before we can close up this project, and that is to drill an angled hole in the door so that water will run back into the chain locker and also give some ventilation so it isn't such a confined, locked up space. We'll have a vent that's pointed up on the outside and on the inside of the chain locker, a vent that's pointed down to help keep the water in and the airflow going. And of course, the inside perimeter of that hole is going to get a good coat of resin. Finally, we can close the door on this one and move on to the next project. Hey, don't stop watching now because there's some little neighbors of ours that you're going to see pretty soon and they're pretty cute. You'll enjoy that. Um, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up down below and also um, get, uh, subscribe if you want to see more of these videos. Oh, also down in the description down below there's a tip jar um, so if you care to contribute to that that would be great and also there's some links uh, some of our affiliate links start your Amazon shopping or your West Marine shopping down there and also there's a Nautic Ed uh, link to two free sailing courses definitely worthwhile even if you just take the two free ones okay thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you soon